Today, I'm going to talk about Carmen. Well, not that Carmen. I'm talking about the Carmen line of fake space. It's the line that divides reality from fantasy. It is the line that separates science from fiction. It's the edge of fake space. So you hear a lot about things that are supposedly happening above the Carmen line, whatever, you know, that's the name they gave it. The barrier, the limitation, whatever form that takes of the firmament over the earth that separates the waters above from here. Uh, it does what it wants. And if it may be alluring like Carmen and you go as far as you want to go and no farther. Now, is there some way that we can discover it, see it? Well, today I'm just looking at what do they call it? What do they define it as? And if you remember, I've stated that I think as far as you can go with the dome and all that business is 60 to 80 kilometers or um, conversely, you know, with balloons and things, maybe 120,000 feet. I haven't seen much verifiable evidence of anything above that, really. Um, the laser tests, they shoot the lasers, they get to 60 to 80 kilometers. So that's somewhat higher, but um, it might be closer to 40 some kilometers that is the limit. I don't know. I just don't know and may never know but uh i find it fascinating to look and see how easily it is to debunk the business going on above now what is going on above i'm certain would be so fantastic in many ways that um if you were told exactly what was going on there you would find it hard to believe or hard to picture, you know, if somebody wants to describe something to you, but you have no context, you know. Um, I read most of the book of Enoch the other day, which I was very, I've been very um, reticent to do that because it's not canonized scripture, but I'm secure enough in my spiritual grounding that uh, I can read these apocryphal works and not confuse or conflate them with the authority of Scripture. And certainly that's proven out by the fact that I disregarded the authority of Scripture for a short time at one point in my life and came back to it wholeheartedly with greater fervor because it proved out in every way to be true. Um, and that's kind of what the point is of what I'm doing here with this channel is the things that I learned in Sunday school, the, the things that I learned in um, the classes, you know, to be accepted into the church, the, um, the catechism, the things that I've learned as orthodox teachings of the church going all the way back have proven themselves. They've been vindicated. The early church fathers, what they taught that these have all been vindicated uh well not all but when i'm striking them off on one column or another uh <laughs> it's a one-sided route and i expect it to continue and that's why i uphold the the virtue the authority of scripture and uh as such um i find it interesting how the same thing can be said of people who uphold what science says, even though science contradicts itself. Um, yeah, I've always had problems with scripture, right? Um, I still do today. There are things that don't, don't sit right with me. Uh, they may be contrary to natural law or my own conscience based on my context, based on my understanding of the world and my personal experience. Of course, I know that can be somewhat jaded, somewhat warped in certain ways or in modes of thinking that I'm in. But um, I don't really see that from the scientist side, even though it's more uh, deserved. The contradictions are stark. The claims are 
every bit as fantastic as the Bible's claims, yet the Bible's claims make so much more sense. And um, I may differ from some other um, channels or flat earth people or whoever, however I'm categorized, because to me it doesn't seem as fantastic to say that something was made first by God's word, that God spoke it into existence, and that's how the genesis of these things happened. And the the way that I relate it is easy, because we're made in the image of God, and we do the same thing on a completely different scale into different ends. But usually, when you make something, when you create something, when you when you work, you it's spoken into first into existence. And you know, these motivational speakers, that, that was a huge thing in the 90s, these motivational speakers. I mean, it still is today, but for some reason in the 90s it was just huge, like Matt Foley. I am Matt Foley and I will be your motivational speaker today. I just drank four pots of coffee down in the basement and I've been waiting to teach you about your life and how to do things right. <laughs> type of motivational speaker and but the, they would say first you must say speak it into existence you know sometimes write it down but they'd, you'd, they'd have you say I will be successful you know it's like mind control but it works I'm telling you that says that stuff does work and uh, so we do the same thing everything that I've ever seen that was made probably began by somebody saying something about it, you know? Um, so it's very easy to picture that. But I haven't seen too many things made by just spilling or something decaying or dropping or rotting or whatever. And, uh, you know, this law of entropy that I learned about, Newton's second law of thermodynamics. It's like they say, you put enough monkeys at typewriters long enough that, uh, they can type up the completed works of Shakespeare. But as Matt Foley would say, I think those monkeys will be using that paper to roll up doobies. Is that Bill Shakespeare there or a monkey? I really don't think so. I think those monkeys will end up living in a van down by the river. Um, it begs the question of the original state, you know, and to me that Again, it's obvious that there was some other mechanism of action that created the things in the first place that decay. And the, uh, the creation aspect of it is so familiar to us, you know? It's like um, a relationship, um, like Carmen spoke of, love. Um, I can remember when I was first starting to fall in love with girls that I uh, had... Um, a fear of what if it doesn't go right or what if you love somebody and then something goes wrong but it's better to love and to have lost than to belong to that group of cold and timid souls who know neither victory nor defeat they've never gained and they've never lost but they have lost because they've never lived and so the point is that it's the creation aspect that makes the decay even possible. And uh, the science world loves decay. They love to focus on it. And they are so insane about it that they will tell you that it is the decay that created the things that you love, though it is also the decay that will cause the things you love to be lost. That doesn't jive with me at all. How about you? A border, a line, a plane, a layer, a barrier that can't seem to be crossed. It's called the Carmen Line. Well, I say, old chap, if there is this line, where would it be? Would it be at the height of airplanes? No. What goes higher than airplanes? Weather balloons, that's verifiable. What goes higher than weather balloons? Rockets or balloon rockets, perhaps? Those are 
somewhat verifiable. I'm still working on those, trying to figure everything out about them. It's pretty interesting. It is leading somewhere, by the way, so get ready for a video down the road. But above the civilian rockets, it's all the same cadre of secret society, governments. That, you know, people say, oh, well, how can all the governments of the world agree about anything? How could they all be in on this conspiracy? Well, how could they all be in on the Antarctic Treaty? I mean, obviously there's something to it. Just where's your brain if you don't think that? Nobody lives go or goes below the 60th parallel, like, unless they're part of the same cadre. What does that tell you? Well, it's the same thing with, heck, I mean, we're so limited. We're limited how high we can fly drones and everything. Um, you know, they try to limit us. Oh, by the way, I had some ideas about high altitude balloons. I don't think it's been done. Send up two balloons, tether them together so that one balloon can film the other balloon in progress, in flight. So that when you reach the uh, breaking point at the end, if something funky happens, then you get a view from the other balloon. Of course, I have to say, have a camera that aims up. But then the other thing that I would suggest about launching, and maybe I'll just do it myself sometime, but launch a balloon when the ISS will be passing overhead. <laughs> you might get a real close-up view of it. At least that's my theory. I still haven't totally figured out what's going on with the ISS either, but um, I, sure, I, I sure as heck I know that it is not where these uh, clowns clown around, that it's just, it's total bunk. But what is the object or the thing up there that creates the silhouette or the light? Um, it seems to be a balloon, but then I've seen some footage where I haven't been able to identify the balloon. Now, maybe the balloon's right above it. Maybe it's hanging from such of a long tether, or maybe there are different ones. Sometimes it might be a plane or, or something. Because they'll fly planes right over your head with, without being on flight radar. You have no idea what it is, where it's going where it came from or anything you have every right to know it's flying right above your head but you don't know and i'm telling you you go on flight radar you go on check it out check it out with everything you check you're finally you get directed to the the military and you think they're going to tell you anything and then freedom of information act i guess would be the next step but if they're flying planes above your head where you can't go and they don't tell you what they're doing and flying around um there's no reason to think that they wouldn't do it over civilian territory around the world at their leisure, at their as they please. So, so where was I? Oh, yes, the Carmen Line. The Carmen Line is something that is the definition between what is aeronautics and aerospace. Um, when you go to engineering school and you want to be an aerospace engineer, you find out that. Not only are there very few programs that offer aerospace engineering, but they're so selective and small and they are shrouded in mystery in some ways that almost nobody really can even do that. So the rocket science, even if you are somebody who actually can, you're at the top 1% and you could do the rocket science. You go to be a rocket scientist by trying to learn. They don't have a degree rocket science. Have you noticed that? But they do have the degree aerospace engineer, at least, well, you think they do. You hear about it all the time when you watch NASA stuff. But when you go to a school like Caltech or Virginia Tech or, you know, MIT, it, it's the aeronautical engineering is huge. Aerospace engineering practically non-existent. And uh, the reason is it's bullshit. And so the Carmen line. This is another thing they made up, and it's just possibly the barrier. Anyway, enough about all this. The Carmen line, yeah, just a made-up term. They try to redefine everything. It's got to be the real Carmen line is going to be the dome firmament. It de delineates the difference between reality and made-up fake space. It's the dome firmament. Carmen line, Carmen, let's leave Carmen for the opera. Cheers. Oh,